everyone, it's Jellica here from aprettyfix.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to make these modern, minimal DIY macrame coasters using the double half inch knot. So stick around. In this tutorial, you'll learn the vertical double half inch knot basics. You'll also learn to create stripes and to create color blocks. You'll also learn a half hitch hack which saves you on some time, so you'll want to watch the video from beginning to end and not miss a thing. You're going to need the following supplies. A few different types of macrame cords, all 3mm single twist, whatever colors you like, a comb, a pair of scissors, and you're going to start your project by cutting 9 macrame cords, each measuring 30 inches all three millimeter single twist. You're also going to be using a bar of some kind to hang the project from. This is how I create all of my macrame pieces. A couple of S hooks that just hook onto the bar, a dowel, and you're going to secure that dowel with um, a couple of cotton pieces of yarn. So here are those nine macrame cords and what you're going to do is you're going to grab one, fold it in half, grab the middle portion where the loop is and you're going to create what's called a lark's head knot. This lark's head knot is used to attach macrame cords to um, your dowel. One of the reasons that the cords are as long as they are is because we're going to be creating two coasters out of them. Now that first row will be considered our first set of knots, but directly below this single row of knots, I'm actually going to be creating two rows of knots at the same time. These are called double half inch knots. So in order to create that first row of double knots, you will need about seven to eight times the width um, of cord to go across. So here I am measuring eight and then I'm going to add just a couple of little dangly bits at the end. These will stick out on the sides and these have to be woven in later on. So here's that dangly bit and when we're going to the right the dangly bit faces the left. So place that end underneath the first two cords and this is how you're going to attach the first double half hitch knot. This is probably the most awkward part of this entire process, but I will be showing you how to do this on a couple of occasions during this tutorial. So the short end of your cord, which is your lead cord, should end up at the bottom and the long end of your lead cord should end up at the top and you just kind of scoop it up. So that creates your first knot. For your second knot, you're gonna take that lead cord and wrap it around those two filler cords and you're going to create this loop on the right side and you're going to continue to kind of wrap that long lead cord through the loop just like that and then kind of gently holding the filler cords in your left hand you take the lead cord with your right and you pull it through that loop and keep pulling until it comes all the way through then you're going to tighten that second knot. So now you've created your first double half hitch knot. Now the rest of the knots will look a little bit different. So you're going to take the lead cord, feed it underneath the two filler cords, then create a loop just to the right of the filler cords. So you're going to anchor it around your finger just to make it a bit easier and then you're gonna feed the lead cord through the loop from behind and you're gonna pull that lead cord out gently until it's all the way through the loop. Now when you tighten that knot, you just pull gently towards the back just so it's nice and even. I found that to be the easiest. So some like to pull it just kind of to the side, whichever works for you. 
So here we go creating a second half hitch knot, same method, wrapping that lead cord around the double cords, which we call the filler cords because they fill the central space. And again, pull it up and gently tie it to create your double half hitch knot. And you just continue the process all the way across. There's a little bit too much of that lead cord left then just snip it off just make sure that there's about three or four inches left at the end now we're going to start a whole new row of double half hitch knots this time the tail end of the lead cord will be facing the right so place it underneath the filler cords and then wrap the long end around the top so you just want to make sure that long end ends up at the top and the short end ends up at the bottom and then you just push that up to create your first half hitch knot. Now for the bottom you place the long end over top of the two filler cords just like you did before but this is a mirror image. So you lead the long end through the loop from behind and then you gently pull that all the way through. Now just tighten the knot and then push it to the top and you've created your first double half hitch knot. Moving forward, all of your double half hitch knots will be created in this manner, which is the way we did it on the, on the other side, but a kind of mirror image. So hanging on to the two macrame cords with my right hand, I wrap everything around with my left hand and use the same hand to pull and sort of adjust and, and create that uh, first knot. And once you reach the end, you'll create another row of double half hitch knots in the exact same way. Now right here is where I'm going to be creating a stripe using a different color. I'm gonna be attaching it the exact same way that I did at the top. So place the lead cord underneath with the tail end facing the left side. Grab the longest end of that lead cord, wrap it around, making sure that it is at the top. Then you just push it up to create your first knot. Then you'll be creating a loop along the bottom so you can create the lower half of your double half hitch knot. So just lead that through the loop and then pull the lead cord up to create the bottom knot. Now notice my hand placement. When I'm going from left to right, my left hand is hanging on to those two macrame cords, whereas my right hand is doing the work of creating the knot. So when I'm heading towards the right, I'm using my right hand to create the knots. And then when I'm heading towards the left, I'm using my left hand to create the knots. So now we need to fill in the rest of the row on either side of that stripe. 
and that is pretty easy to accomplish. It seems a little bit odd and awkward, but really trust me, it's pretty easy. So you're gonna be starting um, by just grabbing those two cords and you're gonna be heading towards the left side. So you're gonna attach it just as you did in every other spot by um, wrapping it around to create that half hitch knot at the top and then you're gonna be creating the second half hitch knot at the bottom. Again, it's always a little awkward when you first attach it, but then after that it gets pretty, pretty easy. Make sure to tuck in the short end of the tail behind the project so it doesn't get tangled up with anything else. And then now you're ready to create um, your double half hitch knot at the end. Lost again, going back around Dreaming all the time when I get things right Lost Now when you reach the end, you're not going to cut off that long cord. In fact, what you're going to do is you're going to turn around. So take those two cords, lift them up, take the lead cord and bring it underneath. And now you can start creating double half hitch knots again. This time, you don't need to cut off that long cord, you just go in the opposite direction. Send me a letter and a bottle of wine Telling me I will be fine Baby, I'm stuck with a halfway heart Slip away if I come too When you reach the end, you're gonna snip off that cord, and this time you're gonna be filling in those rows by starting on the end, going towards the green, going down, towards the right, down again, and then you're gonna create another row. For this bottom row, we're only going to be creating half hitch knots. So one knot instead of that double knot. So you'll notice I'm just creating one knot and then I'm moving on to the next chords. This will allow me to end up with three rows of knots underneath the green stripe, meaning I'll have a row of double half hitch knots and a row of half hitch knots. At this point, you're going to be repeating the process, creating two more sets of stripes, and then just filling in around the stripes in the exact same way. Yesterday the sun and there was rain, beauty in the Monday. And as the light startled our eyes, we let go of disguise. And now 
to finish off this first coaster, um, we're going to be adding two more rows of double half hitch knots. Now I'm going to be showing you a bit of a hack at this point because really I want to use as much um, cord as I can without having to chop it off. So I'm going to show you this what I call half hitch hack and hopefully this will speed up the process for you when you do have lots of lead cord. So instead of wrapping it around the filler cords right away, I'm just going to create a loop with my right hand. And with my left hand, I feed the filler cords directly into the loop. And now I just tighten the knot just as I did before to create that first half hitch knot. Here's the process one more time. Wrap the lead cord around your right hand, then feed the filler cords directly into the loop and then simply tighten the knot. This is such a great way of doing the double half hitch knot when you have an exceptionally long um, lead cord. And hopefully this gives you an alternative option for creating half hitch knots and double half hitch knots depending on your personal preferences. Here's that alternative method going towards the left. So we're going to be using our left hand to create the loop. Our right hand feeds the filler cords directly through the loop and then we just tighten the knot. So here is our first coaster all done. Let's quickly review what we've got so far. We have seven rows of half hitch knots along the bottom and we've got seven rows of half hitch knots along the top. Sandwiched in between we've got two rows that include that green stripe, three rows of the cream, two rows that include the black stripe, three rows of the cream, and two more rows that include that green stripe. So now we're going to create a second coaster that goes directly onto the same macrame cords. We're going to attach it right, um, right to the bottom of the first coaster, though we will eventually push it down and, and I'll show you that in a minute. But for now, simply attach your lead cord 
to the filler cords just as you did before. And for this one, I'm going to continue to use that alternative method of attaching uh, double half hitch knots just because it's a little bit more efficient and uh, I do prefer this style when I do have exceptionally long lead cords. So for this particular coaster, I'm going to be starting off by creating three rows of double half hitch knots and one row of half hitch knots to create seven rows of half hitch knots all together. Now comes the delicate task of sliding down the starting rows of the coaster down a little bit. And one of the reasons why we wanted to start off uh, right against that first coaster is because those rows, those stacked rows, provide a really solid foundation. It's kind of the equivalent of having a dowel along the top that holds everything in place. Otherwise, everything would be kind of flinging around. So it's good to start off with a solid base at the top before continuing on. So for this one, I'm going to be creating a, uh, a row of double half hitch knots starting at the far end. And I just want to show you how easy it is to add colors at various points. Um, as long as you know how to attach that first cord, you are good to go. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I Searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down So here I want to create a solid block of color. In fact, I want to create five rows of half-inch knots. So it'll be two rows of 
double half hitch knots and one row of half hitch knots. Even if the sky is falling down So now I'm going to use one single lead cord to fill in the spaces on the left, creating rows, and then continuing on along the bottom. So here are the finished coasters. Let's take a look at that second one. So we started off with seven rows of knots followed by two rows of knots that include that black stripe. Then we continued on with six rows of knots and then we have another five that include that block of green and then we finished off this coaster with seven rows of half inch knots. So now it's time to remove our coasters from the dowel. It's pretty easy. You just um, pull the dowel off and then you'll unfurl or unravel those loops at the top that we'll be snipping off uh, momentarily. And the way we separate the coasters is by simply snipping it in half right at the center. I had it measured pretty precisely, so I'm being really careful there. Now the final touches are uh, really about weaving in all of those ends and it's pretty easy. You grab a darning needle, you flip it over to the back and then you carefully weave in those ends um, through any loops in the back. And I grabbed two or three loops 
and then I um, basically wove them through. It's a little bit um, blurry at this point. I really apologize for that, but um, but you'll see it gets a little bit clearer along the way. The one thing I would caution you about here is just to make sure that you're not pulling the uh, woven ends in too tightly. You just want them to weave through. You don't want to pull, otherwise it will deform the shape of the coaster. You also want to weave by color, meaning um, black ends are woven into the black bits, uh, cream ends are woven into the cream bits, green ends into the green bits. This is so that um, you know the colors don't bleed through to the front um, and you just want it to be as neat um, as possible. Now once you've finished off weaving in all of those ends, then just snip off the end pieces and if you want, you can leave them as is or in my case, I decided to comb out those fringy little bits, um, just to add an extra special touch. Now I went ahead and wove in all the back ends to the first coaster and now you just um, snip off those loops and then cut the ends again to create matching fringe and then comb out those ends. And now you've got a couple of modern minimal DIY macrame coasters using the double half hitch knot and also the half hitch knot. Well, I really hope this video has inspired you to make your own macrame coasters at home. For more craft inspo, visit me at aprettyfix.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.